Hey there, so it's uh, it's December 25th, 2018, or Christmas morning, and I wanted to uh, record something that I get asked a lot. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you have a great day, you spend a lot of time with family, get everything you want, and of course, uh, don't forget to start saving some money, invest in conservative assets and all that good stuff. So uh, I thought I would talk about uh, how I compare my real estate investments, uh, as I get that question a lot, and uh, I just sort of wanted to break it down because it is it is pretty simple. First, do me a favor, make sure you subscribe, right? This channel is growing, um, but we need to, uh, I always use this to sort of track what I'm recording and, and where there's value. And, and when the subscriber count goes up, it sort of lets me know I'm on point. Hit the like button, where, where the subscribe button lets me know more about the channel, the individual like buttons let me know about each video, uh, which is always great to see. And then of course, leave comments. Uh, as you've seen, I'm the only one that uh, operates this, so I'll interact with you. Uh, and don't forget also, we have a subscriber question series. Uh, so if you leave a question just in the comments, I'll see it. And usual turnaround time is about 48 hours or so for me to create a video. So let me know. And with that, we'll get started. So I thought I'd go over the keys to my approach. First, um, it can't be hard, right? It needs to be something simple, uh, ideally something I could do on a piece of paper if I had to, uh, certainly can do it with your phone, right? Just simple numbers, no advanced appreciation schedules or appreciation assumptions or nothing compounding, you know, nothing nothing hard, right? It has to be both easy and, and simple, to, simple to do and, and really ideally simple to talk about. Uh, can't have a lot of calculations, right? It can't be advanced math. Um, I think people overcomplicate real estate investments and options and choices. So what I'm going to show you is, you know, really simple, um, you know, something I've used for years, something I use to compare everything. Um, can't, no, no calculation I ever do. We'll talk about appreciation. Uh, appreciation does happen. Appreciation is a great thing. But I think appreciation can really drive you to do stupid things because markets change, right? You go from a seller's market to a flat market, flat market to a down market and vice versa. And I don't want timing to be a part of my calculations, right? I want to be able to hold for the long term and not have a changing cycle uh, mess with me. It needs to work across all my investment options, right? I get asked all the time, right, what do you buy, right? Do you buy a house? Do you buy fourplexes? Do you buy apartments? Do you buy small apartments? Do you buy big apartments? Do you buy condos, you know, townhomes, land, uh, mobile homes, uh, commercial buildings, right? And my answer is I do the math. And the math tells me what to do. So sometimes it's a house, sometimes it's a commercial building, sometimes it's an apartment. Um, you know, so so we'll go through it and hopefully it makes sense to you. So what do I use? So I call mine yield, right? I basically look at cash I'm putting down, uh, meaning not down payment, but all the cash required to to purchase and make the asset produce or uh, rent ready, uh, and then the expected uh, cash. Um, you know, that, that's, and I look at the expected cash that I'm returning. All right. So again, I call it yield. Some people may call it cash on cash. We're going to break this down even more uh, here in a minute. We're going to go into the detail. So here's the formula, right? It's expected yearly cash flow, right? Which we'll break down divided by cash required to buy and make ready, rent ready, right? So repairs, right? Depending on if it's turnkey, it's zero. And if it's a full remodel, you know, it's whatever it is. And then I do times that by 100% because I want it to turn in from a, a decimal points to a, a percentage, right? So that hints the word yield. Kind of treat them like a bond, right? I want each process to, or each asset to tell me what the yield is going to be. So that, that's what I, why I use yield, uh, where maybe the more sexy term is cash on cash or, you know, all these other, you know, vocabulary out there. So for me, it's just yield. So let's break this down. Um, you know, so the denominator, the bottom number is... Uh, is the cash required to buy the property. So typically speaking, that's your down payment plus any closing costs, right? Either, you know, just simple escrow fees or maybe you're getting a hard money loan or whatever, right? So all those. Uh, and the big one that people miss in some of the formulas I've seen is what is it required to make the asset produce, right? Are you buying turnkey, so it's zero? Or are you buying something that needs a little work, you know, five, six, eight, ten, 10, whatever? Or is it a full, you know, remodel, right? Is it 20 grand, 40 grand, whatever? So that's, that's your total cash required. So in the end, right, I'm trying to figure out how much of my personal cash I'm going to have to put down to control this asset and make this asset produce, right? So that's your bottom number. Right, so now uh, the numerator, right? That's going to be the expected yearly cash flow, 
So how does that break down? Well, that's your monthly rent, and then you start subtracting, right? So I subtract the whole mortgage payment. Uh, I've known other formulas just to take the interest payment. I just take the whole thing because uh, I can't spend uh, mark, uh, you know, mortgage pay down, uh, right? So I take monthly rent minus mortgage payment minus insurance and taxes minus repair allowance minus property manager minus vacancy factor and then minus anything else that your property may have. Maybe you have HOA or there's other taxes or fees uh, that maybe I'm not used to. So just all the fees. And that produces your expected monthly cash flow. I then take that monthly expected cash flow and times it by 12 because, again, I'm going for a yearly yield. Um, so I take that one month times 12, right, 12 months in a year, and that's my yearly expected cash flow. So let's look at a couple examples. We'll do one single family home and then a fourplex. Just, again, purely examples to see the numbers in action. So first, just take the easy one, right? Single family home requires 25K down. You have 2K in closing costs and you have 8K in make ready. So your total cash to control the asset to make the asset produce is 35 grand. Again, purely an example. Then you start the um, numerator, right? You take 1,200 in rent, minus 600 mortgage, minus 100 in taxes, minus 50 in insurance, minus 100 in property management, minus 100 for repair allowance, minus 50 for vacancies. You do all that and you get $200 a month expected monthly cash flow. Then of course you times by 12 and you get 2,400. So yield, this is what we've been working for. So yield for me is 2,400 uh, divided by 35,000 and then I times it by 100% so I get a percentage yield. So in this case that house, again, 100% an example, just meant to communicate a point, is producing 6.85%. Right, so that's what I do there. Let's look at a fourplex where the numbers are different. Maybe in this case it's 75k down, requires 5,000 in closing costs, 30k in make ready. So now you're spending 110 grand to control that asset. You know the rent's up a little bit, right? So it's 3,600. Maybe you have 1,300 in mortgage payments, 2,500 in taxes, 100 in insurance, 300 in property management, 600 in repairs, 150 vacancy factors. Add all that up, and you're left with a net of 900 month cash flow. Again, purely an example. But you take the 900 times 12, that's 10,800. That then calculates in our simple yield formula of 10,800 divided by 110 grand times that 100% equals a 9.82% yield. So this is why I use yield, because I can use it to on any asset, any property investment, and then just so, simply sort by what has the highest yield. And it tells me where I need to dig in more. Do I always take the highest yield? Well, I always ask questions because maybe my numbers are wrong or I'm missing something or whatnot. But it certainly tells me where I need to focus and, and dig in further. right? And I also know where not to go. right? If it's a very low yield, even though it's a beautiful property like Boardwalk or Park Place, the yield's terrible. right? 1% yield? Forget it. I'll, I'll go in the bank and get 3%. So um, these are the things that I look at. So in the end, I want to know what you think. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment or a question, right? Make sure we, we go after those in subscriber question series. Uh, please subscribe if, if you like what we're putting out here. Um, hit that like button and, of course, leave a comment. Again, have a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.